Congressman Lacheret, thank you for joining us again this week. Yep. Congress has been back in session, and for once, we actually got some stuff going on, some things to talk about. Uh, a lot of focus has been on the continuing resolution okay. and the threat of a government shutdown. Talk to us about where we are and, and where we're heading. Well, last week, as you may recall, the uh, Republican leadership put together a package where there were going to be two continuing resolutions to keep the government open after October the 1st. One that was tied to this mantra of defunding Obamacare, and the other one was sort of what's known as a clean CR that was just about numbers, and it would have been set at pre-sequestration levels, and so it still would have a 6% cut from, uh, from the last fiscal year. The very conservatives uh, uh, smelled a rat, and so they uh, insisted that there just be one, uh, and uh, the only thing that's going over to the Senate is going to be a spending bill at sequestration levels that has as a precondition the repeal of Obamacare. Not going to happen in the Senate. Uh, so so I think the, the, the challenge this week is going to be when it gets ping-ponged back to the House, uh, what it looks like and what the House chooses to, to do with it. Well, where do you realistically think we're heading on this? I mean, look, we all, we, we, we know, everyone knows at the end of the day, Harry Reid and President Obama aren't suddenly going to decide that, that they have decided they don't like Obamacare anymore. Right. A little late for that. Right. Just a tad. <laughs> so, so where are we heading? I mean, are, is there a chance we could actually have a government shutdown? Or do you think at some point the Republicans are going to have to blink or Democrats are going to have to come to the table and work with Boehner to put a coalition together? I, my, my suspicion is that the government is going to shut down. Um, and and uh, I don't think it's going to last forever because unlike the shutdown in, in 95 that only dealt with part of the government because there were only a few of the spending bills hadn't been passed, this is, this is, this is government-wide. So the Department of Defense, Social Security checks, everything. And, and, you know, you saw over the summer Congress can't withstand the pressure from a few whiny people at, at the airport, and so they reinstated the spending for the air traffic control system. Uh, they're not going to be able to withstand the, the constituent pressure for long. But I, I do think that this, this coalition of 20, 30, 40 House Republicans who are insisting on this being the centerpiece, the repeal of Obamacare, are, are willing to go uh, a little bit further than most people expect. That's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, it is. So last week, a couple other things happened. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we actually saw some movement, positive movement on a bill. Yep. Uh, the House passed the uh, Water Resour Resources Development Act out of committee. Talk right. to us about that bill. Well, I, we mentioned last week, you know, in, in terms of a, a Congress that doesn't seem to be able to do much, there, there is a Water Resources Development Bill that basically funds the Army Corps of Engineers, but, but projects that deal with, with flooding and stormwater and a whole host of things. It really is a good infrastructure bill. And it passed, uh, a version of it passed uh, with great bipartisan support in the Senate earlier in the year. And for the first time, you had a bill uh, come out of a committee with really robust support from both Republicans and Democrats. And that should, uh, you know, uh, clear the way for uh, House floor action uh, sometime in October. So a real kumbaya moment for, <laughs> for the yeah. House. We all These like the, water. Right, everybody, everybody <laughs> like likes water. water. Well, something that <clears throat> did not bring people together was the, uh, the issuing of EPA regulations on coal-fired plants. In fact, uh, President Obama took incoming from his own party. Yep. West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin said that, quote, the president was beating the crap out of coal country. Yep. Uh, talk to us about these regs. Well, uh, for, for coal country, they continue to believe that this administration is engaging in a, a, a war on coal. Uh, and, you know, people were sort of resigned in Washington to the fact that the EPA was going to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from existing coal-fired plants. And even though a lot of people weren't crazy about it, uh, you know, in the electricity business or the coal business or the shipping business, uh, that was the expectation. When they sort of upped the ante uh, and these new regulations deal with plants yet to be built, the, the problem is, uh, what my understanding of them is that the emission standards are going to be the same for a coal-fired plant as they are for a natural gas plant. You can't, the technology doesn't exist. I mean, e even, even if, say, First Energy in, in Cleveland and Ohio and other places uh, had a desire to comply with, with, with these new regulations, they couldn't. They, they can't go buy the stuff to meet the regulations. And uh, it's obviously uh, causing a lot of turmoil in the uh, energy production sector, uh, but this is one that people are going to care about be because 
you, you just can't shutter all the coal-fired plants in the country that are not up to speed uh, and still be able to turn on the light switch. And, you know, for, for the people that watch our show, you, you won't be able to watch us anymore. So <laughs> that will be a major loss. That would be bad. That will get people up in arms. <laughs> That's right. That alone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, after we deal with the, the CR and the government shutdown, we have a looming fight over raising the, the debt ceiling. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of out of the frying pan and into the fire with yeah. the, the next fight. Talk to us briefly about how you think that is shaping up. Are, are we headed for another kind of cataclysmic fight here? I, I think absolutely. Uh, uh, the president has said, and, and his spokesperson late last week reaffirmed that he's not going to negotiate on the debt ceiling. <laughs> Well, that, that, that makes it kind of tough because I, I don't think that the Republicans are going to go quietly into the good night and just say, oh, you're not going to negotiate? Okay, we'll just raise the debt ceiling. The, the Republican position has been that they really want a dollar for dollar uh, reduction in spending for every dollar that we authorize additional, additional borrowing, and that re is going to require a negotiation. So uh, on this one, somebody is going to have to blink. Uh, and, and this one, the shutting down of the government is serious and it can have not good effects, but most of those are political. They can be made up with retroactive stuff. Defaulting on the nation's obligations is, is something that, that uh, I don't think people really know all of the things that, that might or might not occur. I mean, it, it may be just like Y2K and not much happens. My suspicion is that's not the case. And if it affects the credit rating of the United States to a just a little, a few basis points, and increases the cost of money uh, to the United States, I mean, that, that those are trillions of dollars over the years. Do you think we're going to see some movement in the stock market in advance of this? As it gets closer and closer, if, the, if investors start to believe that there's a chance that we actually are going to default, do you think we're going to see that canary in the coal mine from the yeah. from the stock market? Yeah, if, if they think that this is real, I, I would be surprised if the markets don't suffer some significant damage. You know, last week they were all buoyed by the fact that Ben Bernanke says that the economy is still too fragile and we're going to continue with the federal stimulus of pumping billions of dollars in through the Fed. This would be a good <laughs> counterbalance on that and I think the market's tanking is a little bit too strong but, but it, it could happen. Well, not exactly a whole bunch of good news this week but anyways, thank you for joining us. Hey, we look forward you. to talking to folks in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you.